Hi all, this is the lecture that's coming out Wednesday the 25th, or possibly Thursday the 24th, depending on how I manage. Um, I want to talk about, in this lecture, uh, I want to talk about absolute convergence and conditional convergence. Um, so remember last time, we distinguished between the terms A sub K of the series and the positive version of those terms which for an alternating series we called b sub k. Um, but in general, the positive version of a number that might be positive or number negative is just the absolute value. Um, so we want to talk about a series like minus 1 to the k over k squared, sum from 1 to infinity. Um, but we also want to talk about its absolute value, which would be, since the absolute value of minus 1 to the k is 1, is just the series 1 over k squared. So the positive version and the alternating version, or in general, any old series and its absolute value. We're going to say that a series is absolutely convergent if its positive version, its absolute value, is convergent. So for example, the series minus 1 to the k over k squared is absolutely convergent because the series 1 over k squared, its positive version, is a p-series with p equals 2, which means it converges. Okay? On the other hand, the series minus 1 to the k over k, k equals 1 to infinity, is not absolutely convergent. That's because its positive version, 1 over k, is also a p-series, but with p equals 1, so it diverges. And of course you remember that this is also called the harmonic, the um, alternating harmonic series, because its absolute value is the harmonic series. Okay, um, that's kind of a funny term to say this series is absolutely convergent if some other series converges. The reason for the terminology is the following. If a series is absolutely convergent, then it is in fact convergent. Okay? So your absolute value converging forces you to converge. Why is that? Well, if you think about adding up the individual terms, if when you add them all up you get to some finite number, it doesn't go off to infinity, then if you're adding some and subtracting others, you're going to bounce back and forth. It's, you're only going to settle down faster. Okay, and that's a general principle. Remember, the alternating series test says that as long as the terms go to zero, the alternation means that you will converge all by itself. So alternating, or in general switching signs, even in a random way, helps you converge. Okay, so now, if you are not conver absolutely convergent, you could be convergent, or be divergent. So we're going to break it up into three categories. So a series can be absolutely convergent. That means both it and its absolute value converges. It can be conditionally convergent. That means it converges, but its absolute value doesn't. And it could be divergent, which means it diverges. Okay? So the alternating harmonic series up here converges by the alternating series test, but its absolute value diverges, so the alternating harmonic series is conditionally convergent. The alternating 1 over k squared series is absolutely convergent. All right, so let's see how you check that. In practice, this is only an issue with alternating series. So let's take a look at these two examples first minus 1 to the k minus 1 over k squared. Oops. Um. The first thing you want to do is check, is it absolutely convergent? So in that case, you just write down its absolute value, k equals 1, 1 over k squared to infinity. And you say, oh, that's a p-series. It's a p-series with p equals 2, so it's convergent. Okay. By now, Recognizing a p-series and recognizing when it converges should start to be pretty smooth for you. Um, 
and it will be helpful if you just do it, can do it quickly so you don't get bogged down. Then we're done, okay? If the absolute value is convergent, it's absolutely convergent. We got nothing else to check. We already know it's going to converge because the absolute value does. Now let's look at our second series, which is 1 over n, or minus 1 to the n minus 1, I think it was, over n. So its absolute value is 1 over n. This is also a p-series, but with p equals 1, so now it diverges. So we've lost, we can't be absolutely convergent, but we can still be convergent, conditionally convergent, or divergent. Two choices, conditionally convergent or divergent. Okay. Um, when you're in that situation, your only choice is the alternating series test. So I'm going to remind you of the original series. Um, it's an alternating series because of that minus 1 to the n or n plus 1. It's positive version. The terms are decreasing. 1 over n plus 1 is smaller than 1 over n, right? 1 over 51 is smaller than 1 over 50. And then finally, the sequence of terms converges to 0. 1 over n converges to 0. So that means by the alternating series test, the original series is convergent. And since we already checked that it's not absolutely convergent, it's conditionally convergent. Okay, That's all there is to absolute and conditional convergence. Reasonable question to ask is, why do we care? And the answer is um, kind of technical. So there are things that you can do with finite sums that you'd like to do with infinite sums. So here's an example. If I want to take a derivative of a polynomial like this, we know the sum rule for derivatives tells you you can take the derivative of each term separately and get that sum will be the derivative of the whole thing. So that's a nice thing you can do with a finite sum. What we want is to be able to do that with infinite sums. So if I have an infinite polynomial where this goes on forever, I'd like to say, there was supposed to be a prime there, that the derivative of this you can find by just taking the derivative of each term. And it turns out that simple fact, thing that works for finite sums, should also work for infinite sums, generally works fine as long as the sum is absolutely convergent. Okay. So what we're going to find over and over again is that um, the nice things you want to be true of infinite sums are true when they converge absolutely, but not otherwise. I'm going to show you one cool example of what goes wrong. Not a particularly practical thing, but it gives you a sense that conditionally convergent series are just really hard to work with. Here's my favorite conditionally convergent series, the alternating harmonic minus 1 over k, it looks like this, 1 minus a half plus a third minus a fourth plus a fifth minus a sixth. We know it converges by the alternating series test. What does it converge to? Turns out it converges to natural log of 2. We're going to see that in a couple of weeks. Okay, We will actually prove that that's true. Um, but here's a strange fact. You know that for finite sums, you can just rearrange the order. 1 minus 1 half is the same thing as minus 1 half plus 1. Um, you can rearrange the terms in a finite sum and get the same answer. That's called the commutativity of addition. You cannot do that for infinite sums if they're conditionally convergent. In fact, I can rearrange these infinite terms if you give me a number that you want this sequence series to converge to, I can rearrange these terms so that it converges to that. I can give you a recipe for getting it to converge to whatever term you want. Um, uh, so just rearranging terms changes the value. That makes conditionally convergent series a pain in the neck and not very interesting. So going forward, we'll need to know 
that we can do stuff because we're looking at an absolutely convergent sequence, that's what, um, that's why we care about absolute convergence. Okay, next time I will finish up section 11.6, I think this was, um, by talking about the ratio test. See you then.